O God, be gracious to me, a sinner, and have mercy on me. Blessed is our God, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For heavenly peace and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world and stability of the holy churches of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed and glorious lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God, to you, Lord, for all glory, honor, and worship are you do, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Today is Mother's Day. Chorania Pola to all mothers, godmothers, grandmothers, all of the women, many years to you God loves you and God blesses you to guide and lead humanity to Christ like the mirror-bearing women which we'll celebrate next week it is your task it is your blessing to bring the news of the resurrection to the world and for that God blesses you with many gifts again many years to you since it is Mother's Day, but also it's the Feast of St. Thomas, of the touching of St. Thomas. His feast day is in the fall, but uh, his touching of the Lord is celebrated today. I want to talk about faith and trust. As we all know, the word pistevo, I believe, means I trust. Believing is something more vague. Trust is very basic human quality. In psychology, they tell us, teach us, that a newborn baby sees the mother, the mother exists. The mother steps out of the room, the mother doesn't exist anymore. Because that basic human quality of trust has not been developed yet. And it is the continuous presence of the mother, the relationship between the baby and the mother, nursing, hugging, kissing, touching, cleaning, comforting, feeding, is what develops that essential relational quality in the human brain, trust. Recently, I listened to a TED talk by Simon Sinek. He says that the second most successful organization in America recruits people not based on productivity, but based on trustworthiness. In the corporate world, the recruitment happens according to productivity. It doesn't matter if the person is an idiot, if he can produce, that's what they need, so that they can have profits. But the United States Navy bases their recruitment on people who are trustworthy, because not only you're trusting them to do the job, but when you are working with them, you need to be able to trust them with your life. It doesn't matter how productive they are. What matters is if you can trust them with your life. And that is what brings success. So today, our Lord and Savior says in the Gospel, be trusting and not mistrusting. In the modern English translation, it says, be believers and not unbelievers. We know that many believers in the past have created a lot of disaster in this human history. Start from iconoclasm, go all the way to crusaders, whatever you want. They were believing in God and they were doing horrible things. But trusting in God is a very different understanding where we are actually trusting God with everything we have, with our very basic human existence. Recently, I was watching a movie and the title came up and it said, 
Either everything is a miracle or nothing is a miracle. Our life is a miracle of God. There is nothing else we can trust in. So in today's gospel, however, we have two kinds of trusts. Trusting in God, that Christ will be resurrected from the dead, but also trust in fellow apostles, fellow disciples of Christ, friends of Christ. Thomas is not necessarily mistrusting towards God, but he is mistrusting towards his friends. They tell him, we have seen the Lord. He says, I will not believe until I touch him. Your touching isn't enough. Your believing isn't enough. Your seeing isn't enough. Your hearing isn't enough. I myself have to verify it. The human trust can get broken in many, many ways to one another. And sometimes it takes a long time to restore faith and trust in another person. It comes through abuse. Our faith and trust in other humans get broken. It comes through disasters that happen on the planet, in our lives. It comes through tragedies. Our human trust gets broken. It happens through betrayal, which is the worst of all that can happen to human life. Many, many things destroy that basic human trust that gets established and nourished by mothers. It is the mothers who establish and develop the seeds of trust in the human brain, in the human mind. And then that grows into become something bigger. And I have to tell you, there is a phenomenon. We often say children don't go to church. We wonder why. Or if children go to church, they don't pray. They just hang out until the basketball game starts so they can play basketball. Because that basic relationship with God is also planted in the human brain by the parents. And this is very important. Remember, and you can teach your children, your grandchildren. Children learn how to go to church from their fathers. The reason children don't go to church is because the majority of the people in the church right today, 99% are women because men don't go to church and children look up to their father and say well if daddy doesn't go to church i'm not going to church why should i go to church daddy is not in church the second thing children learn how to pray from their mothers if their mother goes to church but doesn't pray they'll become a person of no prayer if their father is always in church because he's in the men's club and he has to go and cook every sunday or do this and do that repair this and that the children will go to church the same way if the mother isn't there praying on her knees the children will never learn how to pray and that is how our faith is developed and cultivated in our hearts and that's how we grow to be trusting and not mistrusting so today thomas is teaching us that that is a basic thing and we need to cultivate it doesn't matter how old we are i'm going to tell you another phenomenon my father didn't believe in God, and my mother didn't pray when I was a little kid. When I was 14, I found God, and I went to church, and I became a priest. So there are also exceptions to the rules. So don't say, oh, I know somebody who this, da, 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 da. Yeah, that also happens because God speaks to us directly into our hearts because we're created in His image. Some people become believers when they are crucified next to the Lord. They look at him and say, that is the Son of God. Some people are like the centurion standing at the bottom of the cross and looking up and saying, oh my goodness, that was a Son of God. So there are many things that bring us to faith. So what is the faith for? Why do we need it? It is for the basic relationship. Our relationship with God is based on faith like our relationship with our parents with our friends, with our relatives, with our brothers and sisters, is based on trust. If you don't trust someone, you cannot have a relationship with them. You can have a cold relationship, keep them at a distance, at arm's length, but that is not a relationship. And that is one of the tragedies of the modern church. We go to church because we believe in God, but we don't really have a relationship with God. 
we don't have a relationship with Christ. And that's when we doubt God, because that relationship is what cultivates our trust. It's almost like a chicken, chicken and egg issue. Do you have a relationship with God? Then you trust Him. If you trust God, then you cultivate your relationship with Him. And all the questions that come into our minds to create a doubt in our hearts, that is also very important in the process of our growth in Christ. Because that is the way. And when we are on the way, we don't understand everything. And God gives us guideposts so that we can follow the way, knowing that's where we're going. There is a city 500 miles away, and that's where we're going to arrive. We have never been there, but we trust because someone has told us that there is a city there, and this is the way. I have been there, and this is how you get there. Our faith, our Orthodox faith, is the faith of the eyewitnesses. As when you first time went to New York, your parents probably took you to New York. You had never seen it. They told you there is this great city surrounded by the ocean. It's skyscrapers. The clouds cover the tops of the buildings. You could imagine it. You could visualize it. But the only way you would go there is because of your trust in your parents who have been there before. So our faith is a faith of trust of the eyewitnesses. St. John the Evangelist says, I witness what I have seen. St. Thomas verifies what St. John had seen. And by touching his wounds, by touching his side, he falls down on the ground and declares for us, with us together, my Lord and my God. That's the kind of faith we have. And that's the kind of faith we need to communicate to other people because you and I are in that faith now that we have heard the witness of those whom have seen and touched, who have worshipped him and who have believed him when he was resurrected 2,000 years ago, now and forever. Thank you.